Hey guys, it's Lisa and I'm here today with Victoria Schwab. <laughs> Whitney, be jealous Whitney. I'm sorry Whitney, <laughs> I wish you were here. <laughs> so, we asked on Twitter what questions you guys wanted to ask Victoria and I got, whoa, I got a lot of notifications. <laughs> the first question comes from Sam Whitehouse and it is, how has your writing process changed from your first book to your most recent? Oh my goodness. Well, <laughs> so my 11th book just came out. 11. Yeah, which is nuts. Um, and really, in a lot of ways, I mean, I hope I've gotten better. I've, mm -hmm. you, you get a lot of editorial voice in your head, <laughs> and so I definitely, first drafts have become a lot harder for me to write because I'm constantly aware of the shortcomings of them, <laughs> but I can't make them better until I have something to fix. You have so to splurge out. you have to get something on the page. Um, Really, honestly, one of the biggest things that's changed, aside from, again, hopefully becoming a better writer, is just how much time I have to write. I have very little right now, and so it's hard because I'm trying to keep up a publication schedule, but I'm also touring for half the year. Um, you know, I travel a lot to promote because I want to meet my readers, but at some point we're going to have to renegotiate that boundary of how much time I actually spend traveling if I want to have the time to write. Mm. Okay, the next one comes from Maria Stee. Okay. And it, she asks, are we going to discover something more about Kel and Lila? Is it Lila or Lila? Lila. Lila. I never get with the sayings of those names. For example, his real name and how she lost her eye. Are we going to discover these things? I have a spoilers rule, which is that when you ask me Ooh. questions about books that aren't out yet, and I'm giving this look because anyone <laughs> who actually follows me on Twitter, you guys know this. I'm not going to answer the question. Maria. <laughs> I do it because, you know, there are strict lines between canon and not canon, and I'm really mm. happy for people out there to come up with their own stories. What I will tell you is what is on the page, and <laughs> I will tell you when the book comes out. So um, I'm not answering anything. Oh, no spoilers. Sorry. <laughs> the next one comes from Little Red Dress, and she says, why do you like writing with anti-heroines as main characters? Oh, good question. Because um, I'm an anti-heroine. Mm. I mean, part of it. So here's my thing. I am really interested in human flaw. I think it's uh, well and good when we take a teenager and we make them want to save the world. But at 16, I didn't really care about saving the world. I cared about being happy. Like, I wanted to do things for me. And I think people are generally really self-interested. And so I actually think that my readers connect with anti-heroes and anti-heroines because they actually can see themselves in them. Um, plus, kind of, people are just more interesting when they're a little bad, like... Yes. Bad boys! I mean, I was working on an outline this morning, and I realized that, like, there are two main characters, and one is a murderess, and one is a cutthroat. And I was like, yeah, that's pretty much how, like, I was like, those aren't my villains, like, those are my main characters. <laughs> True love at first murder. Exactly. That, oh, I love it. I just love bad boys, like, bad well, boys. and it's just like, they're, so sometimes they're fun to hate. And they're not too pure, they're just... Like, when you see a character who's just, like, so pure and perfect, you're like, yeah, because yeah, you would really ever happen. Yeah, and then one, they're not realistic, but also, like, I write magic, right? Mm. And so what's nice is I can take really, really powerful people, and they're not omnipotent because they're people. They make bad decisions. They make um, wrong decisions. And I think that's where the interesting stories happen. Mm, definitely. <laughs> so, Lord, someone called Lord on Twitter asks how do you usually plan your novels um so there's a lot of people out there who plan intensely and there are people out there who fly by the seat of their pants i am a connect the dotser which means i need five to ten story points that must exist in my story for it to be mine and then the only other thing i really need to know before i start writing is exactly how it ends down to where we are on the last page of the book and the reason i do that is because I reverse engineer my characters. I need to know who they are at the end so I can figure out who they need to be at the beginning. Ooh. See, I plan, like religiously plan. Yeah. And then I get like three chapters into my plan and then, yeah, plan's gone. Bye-bye. That's bye. why I don't plan. <laughs> yeah. Planning just never fully works. I have to plan to an extent so that I have confidence in what I'm doing, but if I plan too much, then I get bored. And I'm the primary reader for any project. I'm read it 50 <laughs> times, and so I have to love it. And that's the problem with being a writer is that you read your own work and you start hating it because you've read it so many times. Yeah. And you, you just nitpick at every little thing. Yeah. Like, how do you avoid that? You I don't. don't. <laughs> you don't. It's just as simple as I don't. I don't. Okay. All, All right. tweets. I need the all tweets. All right. Um, you have a YouTube channel? I, I do have a YouTube oh, channel. I didn't know you had a YouTube channel. Because I almost never post to it. Um, I... To be honest, like, it's because unless I'm out at a conference, like, doing events, I don't like 
put on makeup and pants and stuff. And so, yes. because I spend so little time at home, if I'm home, I want to be home. Mm. and off and so I just haven't been doing as many videos I've been doing a lot of blog posts so it just changes I have a channel but these are actually pajama pants oh my god I'm kidding. so jealous pajama right now. Pants. they look so comfortable I'm wearing pajama pants as leggings guys um but this yeah is me adulting so I mostly have just been off I really like doing YouTube I did a lot of videos um when my book the archive came out several mm. years ago it's mostly just been a busy thing. Like I have to pick something, and I, I have Twitter, and I have Instagram, and I have Tumblr, and, and it's like at the end of the day, um, I need time to write, and so I have to pick, and so I tend to live on Twitter. I'm pretty sure most people will say just write us books, right? Just they say more. that, but they want me to travel and see them as well, and I want to see them. Um, but yeah, I'm tired. I mean, how long does it take you to usually write a book? <laughs> like um, I need first draft kind anywhere of from four months to two years. Mm. What's the, the quickest one you've done? Is four months, two and a half months. But it was my very first book, and mm. it was only 180 pages as a first draft. So it was a skeleton. It was it's a baby skeleton. draft. But for instance, like A Conjuring of Light, which is the third book in the Shades of Magic series, is 650 pages. The one on your Mac that we were going to try and steal. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I was making sure my Mac was still in my possession. My publicist has been following me around the whole con being like, where's your laptop? She has. Where's your laptop? And I'm like, it's fine. I'm, it's fine. I've got it. After her <laughs> signing yesterday, she had like a publicist coming up like, I can drop I can drop it back at your flat, your your flat. I can put it where it's safe. And she's like, no, it's fine with me. Uh, and Lydia is so nervous. She looks so scared that this draft is going to go missing. I know, I know. Do you at least password it? I started as of this morning. I've never password protected it before, and then finally, because my publicist was getting really upset, I decided to password it. Oh, so I could have stolen it yesterday and not have to deal with passwords. I know. Damn. Now you'll never guess it. Mm. Hey, maybe I'll hack it. <laughs> oh, no, please don't. <laughs> You're like, please don't. Please get don't. My... Just wait till February. Please don't anger the publicist. So, Jennifer Farhan, I'm sorry for the name. Farhan. Farhan. Um, asks, do you ever get writer's block and how do you get over it if you do? Um, so here's the thing is like, I think writer's block comes from one of three places. It comes from fear, boredom, or unsureness, like um, uncertainty. <laughs> I write books. <laughs> Every now and then my brain gets very tired. So if you're, if you're bored, you need to assess why because if you as the writer are bored, your reader will certainly be bored. If you're afraid, you need to know that it's fear and that you just need to put something on page and you can go back and make it better. And if it's uncertainty, you need to figure out what to do. So half of writer's block is figuring out why you have it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just don't let me, I don't let it slow me down. If I'm uncertain, then I step away from the manuscript. I go for a walk and I think it through. If it's fear, I don't let myself step away. I just put something down. You just force stuff. Yeah, that. yeah, because I think that that like all of those things. If you don't understand what it is leading to writer's block, can lead to procrastination. Oh god, and like and it's, and once you start making excuses for not writing, it's it becomes very easy to not write. Oh god, yes, procrastination is our enemy. Exactly. <laughs> I'll probably procrastinate on editing this video for about three weeks. <laughs> Because I procrastinate a video editing. So that's all for this Q&A. Thank you so much for coming here and doing this. Victoria is absolutely lovely. Seriously, go to any of her meetings or sign-ups because she's a very, very nice human. Oh, thank you. She's Please do, lovely. though, because I'm always worried no one's going to come. She's so sweet. I like, sat next to her signing queue yesterday, <laughs> and she was just so lovely with everyone. It was oh, thank amazing. You. Thank like, you. I was just going to dawn going, like, she's really nice, isn't she? <laughs> and then I'm a Slytherin. <laughs> and then she's a Slytherin. Like... But then again, Hufflepuffs and Slytherins tend to be really good friends. I was going to say, yeah, they do. It's, it's the Gryffindors I don't trust. Uh, like, Ravenclaws I respect. Hufflepuffs I don't feel threatened by. The Potter Party? Is it going oh, down? Oh, yeah, I'm a Slytherin prefect. Oh. Um, Melinda Salisbury and I are the Slytherin prefect. Oh, Melinda Salisbury is like queen of the Slytherin. Oh, and I, I think I could give her a run for it. Oh. Like, I really think I could. Um, but we don't like the Gryffindors. <laughs> well, you'll be proud of me because my pajamas at home, like in my flat yeah. right now, are uh, Slytherin shorts. Uh, I do approve. I do approve. I tweeted them to Melinda like at the beginning of this like whole thing. Like, I'm wearing Slytherin clothes. Do you approve of me now? Because uh, I got sorted into Gryffindor uh, originally. But then in the past two years, I constantly get sorted into Hufflepuff. You and... really do strike me as a Huffle in like yeah. the best way. Like Hufflepuffs are very nurturing. All my friends are saying I'm a Hufflepuff because I'm a total mother apparently. Slytherins tend to have Slytherin friends and Hufflepuff friends. Mm. Hufflepuffs are just stoners who feed everyone. That's what my they're, opinion they're is. They're kind. They're I very feed everyone. Kind. Yeah, and I don't 
I I don't like <laughs> like I don't do kind. I was I was like trying to think of how to word that. I'm like I am not a nurturer. Like not... I like someone was talking about their child, and I was like, oh. I am not a procreator, but I can appreciate your small spawn. Um, like, like I don't understand. That's my favorite sentence. <laughs> I am not a procreator, but I can appreciate. I am using that from here on out because all my friends are babies, and I'm like. Okay, oh. my I um who's it? Hillary Monahan online called them womb goblins, and I'm like, that's a really actually I think it was Hillary. Someone online called like them it. womb goblins, and womb goblins might be my favorite. Womb goblins. Because I go up to my pregnant friends. Because a lot of my I'm 29, and a lot of my friends are you know getting yeah. pregnant and stuff. And I go up to them and I'm like, do you realize that there's a small parasitic <laughs> entity inside your body that's siphoning off your life force that is not you? And like it is a foreign object inside of your body, and they look at me and they're like, "Like we will really look are looking forward to the gifts that you give our child when you're its aunt." But could you stop? <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Victoria does have a YouTube channel. How are um, you can post go back. So here's the thing. Here's my challenge to your to your followers. Oh. If you search YouTube well enough, you can find a video of me dressed up as a giant cupcake. Um, Playing a character, sugar high, becoming a villain, sickly sweet. Painting my face with chocolate frosting. The first person to send me that video and the first person I get that video from wins the signed copy of the Savage Alarm. Yeah, yeah. If you get me that video, that's how you win this giveaway. Not the video of me answering questions doing a Q&A session mm -hmm. as the cupcake. Me as, as aspiring villain, sickly sweet, the giant cupcake. I need to see this. Send it me, guys. I need to see this so badly. <laughs> I'm like, I just... It, no, it's, it's, it is, I'm quite proud of it. I'm, I'm looking forward to this immensely. <laughs> okay, guys, like, comment, subscribe, enter the giveaway, find the giant cupcake, Victoria Schwab, and we'll see you guys soon for another video.